Welcome to Go Figure. My name is Nadeem Makarin, CEO and founder of Gojek, Southeast Asia's first super app. Gojek does ride hailing, food delivery, payments, even on-demand massages. You name it, we do it. Go Figure is a podcast dedicated to expose the inner workings of ambitious tech companies in the emerging world. We like to talk about things we like and talk about things we don't like. There are a lot of myths out there that we want to dispel, so keeping it real is kind of our mantra. Hope you enjoy it. Kunal Shah, what an honor. What an honor. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Go Figure. How you been? Good. Thank you for having me. It's a very interesting format. It, uh, <laughs> is this new to you, this kind of format? Yeah, I've done a total of one, one or two podcasts in my entire life. So this is always an unusual format for me. Uh, I've always been on stage and never actually have a discussion kind of format. I've never done a podcast with a founder before. Well, so this should be interesting. Really? Okay, so, so this should be very interesting. I'm a huge fan of your work. I'm a huge fan of your talks and speeches. Um, you know, your, your uh, Delta Four concept has been something that I use uh, internally in Gojek, and I've learned a lot from you personally. So thank you for being a buddy and a mentor. So for those of you that don't know, Kunal Shah is the founder of Free Charge and the founder of Cred, a new startup uh, based out of India, but, you know, probably going to go global at some point. <laughs> Um, a serial entrepreneur and one of my buddies. And so thank you for being on the show. And for today, uh, what we wanted to discuss about, you're the first external guest mm -hmm. to our uh, podcast and you won't be the last. But founder to founder, let's talk about the dark side. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the things that are uncomfortable to talk about and the things that don't get shown too much in the fireside chats mm -hmm. and in the seminars that we have. Because there, you know, the, the overarching objective in the talks that I do, that you do out there is to inspire, to yep. shed insight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Go figure it's a little bit different. Um, here, we prefer to share the things that usually don't get talked about outside of the walls of, you know, the intimacy of your close friends. So that's why we're here to talk about the dark side. Cool. Where do you want to start? When I say dark side, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Um, the, the darkness that is below this, all the glory that the founders get, mm. right? Do we truly enjoy that or do we dislike that? Do we feel it's a burden? I don't know. You tell me, Nadi. <laughs> you, you are like the celebrity of Indonesia <laughs> for all practical purposes. No la. Does the uh, uh, glory come at a cost and price that allows you to only live life in a certain way where it's, it's harder to be more real? Uh, and, and I think it's a, it's a constant challenge because people look up to these founders as some heroes and, and mm -hmm. we are just normal people trying to stretch ourselves, inspire people and constantly be in this mode of insane optimism in front of people and insane paranoia inside and sometimes in a in a smaller group and and constantly switching those sides and and i think a lot of people don't understand that side because i very few forums allow people to be be vulnerable let's put it this way let's mm -hmm. let's, let's let's talk about uh why is that i think I think we've not accepted, at least in the East, not accepted failure as an acceptable mode of operating life. Which is so ironic because it is the only fundamental way to learn yeah. and get better. Yeah. I think in a micro scale, in a big scale, whichever way, yeah. it's so important. But I think East is also a hero worship culture, right? So I think we have the curse of wanting to make people heroes. Right. And, mm -hmm. and therefore, we do not want to see any flaws in them, but they are full of flaws. They, mm -hmm. are, they are probably a lot many more flaws. They just have a few spikes. 
uh, not the unicorn spike like the <laughs> actual work spikes or but the thing is a lot of people don't understand that they are equally flawed right they are equally having blind spots and not knowing uh, they're just very fortunate uh, to be doing what they are doing i think the first time that I began to be okay with vulnerability. I remember this. I was in the middle of a students, a university student seminar. I think it was a couple of years ago. And it was around the time where I was starting to slowly shed this, you know, image of of invulnerability. And someone asked me a question about their own startup. Mm-hmm. And I literally thought to myself, and whenever you think, you know, your eye goes up like that, and you think, and I'm like, I don't know. And my normal reflex to that would be like to give him a really polished response <laughs> about that. And at that moment, I just decided, and I don't know why, I just decided to say, honestly, I don't know. That's really <laughs> not my domain. And uh, I don't have any experience in that vertical. So I'm sorry. And you could see these kids just go like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> he doesn't know? Like, It's, it's funny. I just still remember I remember sending you a message probably a few, couple of years ago and telling you congrats on the new fundraise and and you went all dark on me like Ronald, what's the point of all of this and <laughs> what are we really doing over here and why is this and 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 it's it's such an unusual conversation for people to understand that there's a moment for you to be being happy because you have raised a large amount of money but that's the time you are thinking about what's the point of life and what are we doing and how does this all thing play out and because we are trying to build these large companies in really short period of time where and, and in normal life it would right. take in what like at least 20, 10x 10x more years. years yeah so in 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 that time and, and unfortunately we still have the same 24 hours per day hmm. that we can literally be doing that and and do we sleep? I don't think we sleep, right? I mean, I think I'm problem solving when I'm sleeping mostly. I'm thinking about <laughs> stuff. I'm, uh, uh, and I'm sure it's the same for you. And and people talk about work life balance, right? And and as founders, like, how can you achieve that when you have like high growth, uh, thousands of people depending on you, and and you are constantly making. F- decisions almost it's like you're driving this 10x f- faster formula one car mm. and every decision can be near fatal and you have to be right 10 times a day <laughs> on those decisions and if you don't get it right you can't let anyone know that you got it wrong yeah and, and <laughs> we are not these gifted sage wisdom guys that can be always right we are learning on the job. Most of the stuff that we've learned is on the job, right? So all of it. So how how are we supposed to like live that normal work life balance? Because you're there is no way you I means what is a vacation for us? Like thinking about stuff that we've not thought about at yeah, work. Yeah, making a conscious effort not to think about the stuff that you're thinking about. Correct, and, like and that's my <laughs> my vacation. Yeah, but the thing is that it is just. Uh, hard doing what we do and and and, and it's it's glorious from the outside and and I'll tell you I mean, my, one of the biggest things that I do often with people who are new founders is to tell them to not start up because I tell them what that, do you mean not start up don't oh, do it yeah when I when I see an idea that is not good or, or I see a mediocre idea uh, and I'm known for shitting on pretty uh, aggressively on some of the founders because they don't understand they will struggle the same three years come out as a failure will doubt their existence of competence I've seen so many competent guys from Ivy Leagues uh, IITs all of these places who will like go through the struggle uh, fail doing a stupid startup and not be able to recover from that right and I think if we allow people to know that this is not glorious this is going to be fairly dark. If you're signing up for this stuff, at least pick a good team, good idea, all of that, because it's going to be painful. I, and by the way, there is no exception to this. I completely agree uh, with that. There is one element that I disagree with. Mm-hmm. It is those guys who do spend those three years battling it out on a bad idea and then failing pretty spectacularly, but then getting back on the horse 
it's usually those people who can deal with so much failure and get back up that that will eventually succeed. I agree. Um, in, in, in the conventional definition of succeed, of course, it's a debate about it. But to your point, what I always tell uh, uh, in, in, my, in my other speaking engagements, especially to young students, is that you know, my favorite response, and I'm being ironic here, my favorite response to it, oh, so, uh, uh, and someone goes up to me and says, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur. And I'm like, okay, um, what's your idea? And they say, oh, I don't have it yet, but I really want to be a founder. That is the moment where I have two choices at that moment. Do I tell them the, imp- the relevant and important information at that time or do I lie to them? And so what I now do is I tell them, first of all, if your entire objective is to be something, you will never ever, in the entrepreneurial game, you will never ever amount to the level of success that you think you want because you're not obsessing about something in the real world that you want to fix a problem you don't want to address. You're obsessing about the image or the vision of you in the future, which is the glorious founder story of which there's a 99, for every one glorious founder story, there's a 99 or 9,099 um, examples of those that didn't make it. The motivation's already wrong. Um, and so I, I completely agree with you on, on the point. I actually disagree with what you're just saying. I'll tell you what. I think. It, we overemphasize that there, there are problems that need to be solved. According to me, every single thing is a problem. If you can make something more efficient than what it is today, you can define every single thing to be a problem. Let's take an example. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to make digital books, right? But the real problem, I mean, it solves, okay, you don't have to carry books and you can carry thousands of books now. But the real problem is I want I want to be able to read one book a day automatically in my brain and and when I'm sleeping or something of that nature. So if you can create that product, books will become inefficient and therefore be defined as problem. I think most people reduce the scope of things that they can build on by defining that the problem I'm trying to solve for, the right thing according to me is that inefficiency I'm going after. Mm. And therefore every single thing is inefficient. Right? You can almost take every single startup and say it's inefficient. Right? You can take any single product and say it's inefficient. Mm-hmm. Right? And you can make something more efficient than you can actually create wealth. Second thing is that I think it's extremely important to be in love with the idea of being successful than being in love with your idea. Hmm. A lot of times, people who fall in love with their idea, right, learn very little because hmm. they are so biased that they are not able to read the signals of the market. Falling in love with the idea, falling in love with the problem. Problem is, that was problem is is is, is myopic in my view. Okay. Here's what I'm, I'm what I think is the right way of thinking about Interesting. it. Interesting. For example, I built free charge, which solved the problem of recharging online and mobile prepaid. I've never used mobile prepaid in my entire life. I've still not used any mobile mm. prepaid products. Mm. Right? I think it is reduces the scope of what you can be building and the size of what you can be building if you start thinking about problem because by definition they are much more sharper in nature but if you say I want to create a large business right and and I want to start backwards of that and where do I start today what is the thing that I do today that will eventually result in a large business right like free charge credit none of them appeared like problems to solve nobody Mm. even thought it was a problem Mm. right but the moment you create a better solution people thought the previous thing sounds like bullshit Whatever I've been doing with this thing, they move to this new behavior, right? So things appear to be a problem when you discover a better solution. Hmm. And a lot of times when we start focusing only on problems to solve, the world is becoming so efficient very fast that you will not see enough problems. If you say that I need to make a large business and where do I start from? What is my entry point over there? And then build a larger business around that. It's a, it's a, it's a new way of building business in, in a hyper-connected world that we are in right now right? Uh, the whole world's businesses are becoming APIs now. 
right so you need to think about businesses as distribution platforms now mm-hmm. right and you cannot think of distribution platforms unless you really find out what is that entry point through which i will be able to acquire customers retain them love them and then able to cross sell upsell multiple things on top of that i think a lot of time people forget that and get obsessed with the problem the problem is that there is not enough room over there to make things more efficient a lot of times it depends how big the problem they are attacking sure So I do come from a different mindset here than you are. But going back to your point about why do you then tell mm-hmm. young founders to quit? Uh it's cuz if the idea is to become more successful then you should not be in love with your idea. Okay. You should be able to accept that it's absolutely a bullshit that I agree. idea. I agree. And I think yeah. people have the sunk cost but to quit mindset. being a founder or quit their idea. Quit their idea. Okay. And okay, then so. and then uh when i tell them about the dark side that hey this will this might result in uh, your relationship disappearing and this might i tell them the dark side that i've seen people go through mental illnesses people will go through a uh, relationship failures people will lose friends people uh, will lose sorry. everything mental illness mm-hmm. or uh mental uh issues or illness however way you define it depends on the extremity is a given I just want to point this out. Sure. If you start a company mm-hmm. and any founder that tells me that they don't suffer from some kind of a mental health issue during after trying it out for 3, 5 years, 10 years, whatever, uh to me is a liar. Um okay. they're they're m- w- for sure it was it'll be your one of the most dark things to fight internally are the mental challenges that that lead to mental health. L- let me tell you the scary part. it it's depressing when you'll have a successful exit also mm. let me tell you why mm. cuz when i sold free charge i i it was the largest exit in india it's a big achievement a lot of people made a lot of money and everyone celebrated and everybody celebrating and i was going through this dark phase where i was just almost angry at everybody and 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 why? obviously figured out i i met and i got the relation when i met the brain tree founder uh in in the US and and he told me hey let me tell you all all the stuff that will happen to you in 6 months from now after your exit because he had just gone through an exit and he said you're going to have this situation uh you will find it weird with your friends uh you will be upset with your colleagues congratulating you on stuff and because I'll tell you what happens we are used to this life on a daily basis when you exit when you have a good financial outcome you have no purpose to be up next day i remember the next morning after my exit I did not wake up from the bed for 6 hours after waking up because mm. I felt that even if I don't wake up today nothing will change I mean it's, it's great everything is fine and people are going to be okay I I lost purpose mm. right and I think what did what, that feel like it feels it feels really really dark and and it it, it hits you in months after that because mm. you have this empty life suddenly and 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 then I discovered there is something called as astronaut syndrome so astronauts and people who come back from wars feel the exact same depression uh, uh because they live this extremely strong uh aggressive uh, you can die any moment life and suddenly you have peace mm-hmm. like astronaut syndrome is like you just be on a, a mission and then you come back and you're stuck in a traffic and you're angry at that stupid stuff because you were on such a bigger cause and mission yeah and and it almost gives depression to all of them uh after the exit uh because you went through that particular phase and i could not process it i was like this nasty guy on social media i was to just bash everybody and not realize that it, i'm just going through that and i should have just probably passed that phase and 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 this is even after shoring the big ship and like making sure everybody got the money and all of that so the biggest realization i learned is that there is very little literature about what happens to founders after they exit or they make money or whatever yeah. and and it's Episode systematically is over. systematically it's always dark in the past people were valued based on the years of experience they had now people are valued based on the experiences they have per year right if you think about it as a founder the amount of experiences that you're having per year is exponentially more than most people which yeah gets you closer to reality than most people and the reality is not fun yeah right that's why i tell you a lot of stand up comedians go through depression because after making jokes on human behavior they actually discover what human behavior is mm. and it's pretty dark and then you're like what's the point of this life mm. 
so we don't realize that in this accelerated mode of learning and experiencing you get so close to reality so quickly right that most people will get it when they are at 60 70 and they are already old and fragile and it's okay if they feel that life is meaningless at that point of time but when you are in your 30s and you find out life is meaningless how do you inspire your team how do you feel like this cheerful leader in the morning and like suffer with that and i think therefore the adjustment of those multi personalities that we live comes at mental illnesses mm. and that the mental illness part i think is exacerbated by the fact that you are expected to constantly be strong yeah and expected to not to conceal that because and it's true you can't have a moping around ceo founder mm-hmm. that is going through some stuff and expect to inspire the people around you you have to put that front up i think that's where a, a core team comes into play right in my view they should be able to absorb sometimes and and you should be able to absorb sometimes when they are going through those phases and it'll it'll happen there is no escape from that i think a lot of people don't realize that unless you have a team which can be extremely real with each other and i think nadeem you've done a fabulous job of having a really a good core team that you have and 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 and, and honestly i'm here to learn more about that and i actually i was spending time with andre earlier and understanding what is the secret and he's like oh this is how nadeem operates and i was like how is he managed to do this and i think that has only happened because you've you have hacked trust by being vulnerable a lot of people don't understand that the vulnerability is the fastest way to create trust that is true and and uh, in this fake macho leader syndrome you are mostly distancing distancing with people because i tell you why they think of you as this person which you are not rather be what you are and still do your best and and therefore you're more relatable and they can understand and empathize with you and like they will go on the battle with you uh if you are real with them but if you are this fake person uh and they discover some other stuff from the outside and and you're giving this oh we are we are sorted our don't worry we have all the fund raised sorted and guys and if you're not real and they like, guys we are fucked like we need to improve this quarter and this is the situation then they will like really sign up for that and win that for you but, but i eb tested some of this by the way interesting So I I I I did I won't say with who or members so I I I went up to some of my uh close leaders and I said you know so do you want to like you always tell me like you want to be informed of everything I'm going to give you a chance so is your answer yes or no and of course their answer is like yes immediately so I did it I did it for about um 6 months where every piece of bad news I would tell this person okay At the end of it, I asked them, you know, so how do you feel at this? And and, and the person had a really bad time. <laughs> a bad time because there were so many things that were completely out of this person's control that was not actionable. That was only increasing the level of fear. And this particular person had um had uh, uh not fear issues, had like anxiety issues sure. and and uh was not very good and adept at dealing with with uh bad news in general right because more stressed out person which is mm-hmm. very common mm-hmm. very common some mm-hmm. of the best people have this uh, mm-hmm. characteristic uh but <laughs> i stopped after six months and it, and it improved so you know yes there's a difference between vulnerability which is based on authenticity and there's a difference to opening up your heart mm-hmm. to your team constantly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. those are two very different things I, I, but without the kevin and andre who I share everything every fear every insecurity everything and of course my family and my sure, friends that sure, I do that that's still sure. my outlet um you know I don't think I would survive so you need when you say core you need that group yeah. of people who you know are as tough because uh, let's put it this way Nadeem your your existence your real the real Nadeem exists not in you it's in them hmm. you, you are on cloud let's think about it that way concentrate all of your personality in just in you and it's not kind of evolving along with 10 15 people who are plugged in through APIs in you uh, uh you are likely to collapse so you've done a cloud 
architecture for yourself and and by plugging different apis and different people what you've done and and obviously you have to know which api to plug where also right yeah. like certain things like you you need to have a zen like person in your life you can tell them anything and they'll be like hmm nice interesting and they should have no reaction because they will take any blow and tell you that two light right sentences that matter at that point of time and not a big lecture because you're not in the mood of lecture that point yeah. of time right uh, i think just finding that right apis to become a cloud or a platform as an individual is extremely important for founders right how how important is the personal api group the people you don't work with in your life it's extremely important because there are certain issues that you will be going through in your own relationships or you will be going through your own anxieties and anxieties are something that just needs to be finding an outlet they are meaningless at times right? mm. we have worry about small small things but unless we express that right we will not process it sometimes thoughts become clear when we express them right but sometimes you cannot express uh unstructured thoughts to some of the work guys cuz they will be like you are not even making sense mm-hmm. but at least having some of the guys in your personal life where you can absolutely not make sense and they should think nothing of you they should be like okay nadeem you are just nadeem for us and not this celebrated fortune 40 under 40 founder because that's when you can really not having to play this magnanimous role and just ramble sometimes yeah and 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 we have to cause cause there is so much stuff that is going on in your mind that you need to just sometimes say it right or do therapy yeah or or therapy or or therapy sometimes is is helpful uh, uh if you obviously find the right person to do it with right and i think just being able to express process thoughts right and and i think the brain needs constant defragging right i'll tell you one more thing that i have seen in traits and on founders unless you have the ability to convert pain into fuel you will not survive this game hm that's i agree yeah so an ability to convert pain into fuel on a regular efficient basis requires you to be having a lot more clarity and anchoring in life right yes and and if you do not have that level of clarity in life or security in life right like nadeem some of the stuff that you've done for your leaders and on how you've treated your cap table and esop is is legendary and honestly i have a lot to learn from that and that gives you this amazing amount of security that you believe that even if this does not really end well you would have done extremely well for people that you've kind of got signed up for doing this for you and that gives you this amazing superpower to just fight it out because you are not fighting an easy battle you are uh, uh uh in the most competitive market in the most competitive category uh and 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 on almost all dimensions right and and you probably are fighting with lesser capital uh, uh in, in in on many fronts but the thing is unless you have a team that feels that extreme amount of uh, passion just the way you do and and like a cloud you will never be able to create this kind of outcome so i I've, i've noticed people who who convert pain or 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 failures into fuel uh just go really really far i i love that analogy converting pain into fuel but i feel that there are stages there are sequences of coping mechanisms mm-hmm. um that at least i experienced on the first level is trusting your team that's the first resilience so if we could talk about like all these things that prevent your bones from breaking if you're in a fighting sport right so like yoga would be an example of it yeah. like the first level of protection is trusting your team members yeah. okay for me that was the first thing that got me through most of it trusting and to a certain extent enjoying your team members this is two different things uh you have to trust them to enjoy being with them but you also have to enjoy being with them to continue to feel the trust you have to like which which is why you know we we had these debates about it is a is a is a startup a sports team or a family and i think the most effective ones you cannot avoid being both at different times you cannot 
So first is, is trusting the team. That's your first level of resilience against the darkness. Mm -hmm. The second level of resilience, the sequence, is this sense of overarching purpose. Mm. The stronger your purpose, the more you can deal with pain. But I want to be very clear what purpose means here. A lot of founders have the perception that purpose is the mission statement of your company. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and they mistake it and then they, they go down a rabbit hole of depression. They don't understand why. Why? I'm, I'm living my purpose. And the reality is that you're not. Your mission of the company and your individual purpose may not always be as one. The closer you are between what your company does and how it behaves to your individual purpose as a human being, the closer it is, the more alignment you get and the more you're in a state of flow. Mm -hmm. The further you are, these two things, and, and it takes a huge amount of self-awareness to begin realizing how far the gap is. Mm -hmm. So, But it's very easy to tell. It's when you're shaky. Yep. When you're shaky, that means you're, you're diverging. Yep. When you start feeling like, why am I doing this? That, that's that question that you ask, why are we in this? That's when usually what you're doing and the purpose of who you are are beginning to diverge. So the, the second part about this resilience is about purpose aligning, not always, but a big overlap with what you're doing. Yeah. This is very important. This overlap between your personal mission, uh, sorry, not mission, your personal sense of purpose and the mission and what the actions of your company are must have a pretty significant overlap. There's a third sequence, and this is the final one, mm -hmm. which I've only recently began to acquire mm -hmm. this ability. Mm -hmm. And this is, how do I put it? It's very hard to describe. It is the ability to enjoy the journey instead of evaluate yourself on the outcomes. Mm -hmm. This is by far the hardest one. In, in the world of tech startups, whereby every victory and defeat is a public, especially when you're a B2C customer, mm -hmm. uh, B2C company, yep. every victory and defeat is a public defeat, yep. a public victory. And so you have society telling you, you suck or you're great, and it's like this roller coaster. When you've had enough of these ups and downs, you begin to realize that when you're on the way up, a down is coming. Yep. And when you're on the way down, an up is coming. Most people make the mistake of thinking up means up, 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 up. Yep. Most people, and then they mistake if it's down, yep. there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Yep. So that awareness of the cyclicality of how life behaves and how startups behave begins to give me the confidence that this is just the process. I'm just in the flow. And if I don't start living in the present and enjoying the flow, I'm just going to get lost. And I, I stop being so judgmental of myself for outcomes out there. And instead, I try to just be present in the game, in the sport itself. Mm -hmm. And this is just an extended training period in life. So I take a long-term macro approach. Mm -hmm. And that creates distance and that creates calm. Yep. That whatever happens, yep. it's okay. I'm playing a 20-year game. Yep. It's okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I, know if I think, you... I think it's an interesting way of thinking about this. And you, you mentioned about your personal purpose and company's purpose kind of being the same zip code, at least. Uh, and you mentioned about self-awareness, right? Uh, Not only purpose, demonstrated actions yes. that support that. You can put whatever you want on yeah. your mission statement. I mean, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. I think the reason, uh, what I've seen, the best companies feel like cults. The yeah, reason they feel of. like <laughs> cults, the reason they feel like cults is that values are not written but lived, right? And it almost feels like a religion then, right? Religion has rituals, religion has sacrifices, religion has uh, a code uh, through which people align. Mm. And a lot of times we, we forget that a, a, a cult also has ability to kind of make big things happen, right? When you talk about self-awareness, right, I have seen founders, by the way, uh, the thing that a startup can do is sometimes make money, 
but it always guarantees you a a crash course in self awareness <laughs> cuz trust me you will be slapped hard to know what you are and what you are not and if self awareness is not exponentially growing uh, first of all you should not be a founder uh, you should call it off and say the thing I'm, i'm looks like i'm the same cuz compounding of you and your company the function of how you get clearer mm-hmm. and once you are clear inside you will see the world to be more clear ways right like i i mentioned i remember you once told me hey i've removed all the social media apps from my phone or whatever right and i think that's an interesting thought because what you figured out is that uh, the need for external validation on your action is such a interesting problem to be because you'll be up and up and and then people need stories so they bring you down and down and and if you just like disconnect from your yourself from that and say that hey I don't care what's happening and what's being written about me and spoken about me and I'm going to just do my job well and focused on that you will have dramatically better outcomes right if if a if a team sees that the founder is mostly about public perception and not about customer love and customer loyalty or customer dedication uh, then they will also worship the same god mm. which is the PR god Mm-hmm. right and and not do any real stuff mm-hmm. and i've seen that so many times it plays out that people mimic the founder uh in every single company and most times you will be realizing that if you're not a high self awareness founder you'll realize that why is my team doing lots of this bullshit they are only amplifying but that you are doing right and you don't realize that mm-hmm. cuz you don't know that you are that right if you are all about oh let me appear in forbes and i let me just have my speech everywhere and and that's your primary driver of motivation your team will also mimic the same behavior mm. instead of trying to go on the trenches and just building stuff that people will love but if they they, they see a founder who's extremely paranoid about every single customer feedback and interested in knowing how is this being solved and what is the end pace of this and like then the org will mimic that as well right so i think the founders have this weird or a unique ability to set culture by their everyday behavior mm. and unless they are self aware they will not correct it and then will be shocked when their org mimics that behavior mm-hmm. in an hugely exponential manner and it's too late by that time because they don't see it they don't see it in themselves yes. and therefore they don't see it in the organization until much later yeah. when it's already been entrenched i want to talk a little bit about this public perception mm-hmm. and about the reason why i stopped social media about mm-hmm. two years ago because i think this is a very salient point if i were to tell you that i stopped social media because i didn't care uh what people think of me i would be lying to you mm-hmm. i'd be lying to you and anyone who says that i have credibility issues with that person normally if they can convincingly argue to me that they don't care at all what people think i don't think that's true i don't i think that no one can truly not care i care about what people think of me but that's just something that i have to deal with as a social human um and i think everyone to a certain extent cares what people think of us because we are social beings Having said that, founders can be on one side of the spectrum and the other side of the spectrum. There are hypersensitive people to public opinion who are very reactive founders, and there are people who are less reactive and, you know, a little bit, you know, the subtle art of not giving an F, you know, like so it's 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 they're on this spectrum. Now, what I what I wanted to say was that no matter where you are in the spectrum, do not think that deep down in your core just cuz you pretend to say that you don't really care what people think doesn't mean that you don't number 1 so please know thyself about whether you actually care and if you have identified yourself on the spectrum whereby you know I'm pretty sensitive to this stuff you need to take proactive steps to remove those opportunities whereby other people can bring you down and make you feel bad worse etc i sat there with my uh uh you know you know leaders just love talking about like oh 
I know everything that's going on in the company. I tell my team members, I want to know everything. Is it? You know, I was like that for a long time. Um, about a year and a half ago or two years after I started on social media, I realized the impact of stopping that distraction. And it had a huge cognitive impact on, on, on my ability to, to be calm and less anxious. And I told my team, it's like, tell me what I, only things that are actionable on my part. Mm -hmm. Only, only tell me bad things that are actionable on my part. If there is absolutely nothing that I can do about it, do not tell me. Because all it will do is depress me or make me feel bad. And I've got a million other things that are actionable mm -hmm. that I need to focus on. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing about having perfect information on everything, I think I disagree with. So it's a great framework. I think all B2C founders are by design likely to be high empathy. Otherwise, they'll suck at being a B2C founder, right? High empathy mm -hmm. is a double-edged sword, right? Because you feel everything. Yep. And and because you're the sponge that can absorb almost everything, it's important that what kind of information comes to you. Now, actionable is a great framework. But another framework I would say is that uh, who's saying it, right? So mm. if people who are more competent than you have achieved more stuff than you, and when they are saying it, pay attention. Because it's almost like free advice. Mm. If people who are envious uh, please understand status is a zero-sum game right so sometimes if I cannot go up I'll bring somebody down to feel good about my life in, in, in when it comes to pure status as a game money is money is not zero-sum but status is right that's what a very famous thing that uh, Nathim Taleb talks about now if this is true you have to understand whose feedback is coming from what is there a motivation? Is there is there a true insight? Or a, you have to empathize. So a lot of times, I used to get so much hate for no reason because I had an exit and made money. Really? Because most founders don't even get funding, right? And I don't think I am smart founder compared to most people. Like people are really bright, gone to IIT. I'm a philosophy major doing tech startups. Uh, but they cannot accept that. And, and I used to get so much hate for no reason. And then I used to understand it more. And I used to just ask them, are you okay? When they used to write hateful comments. Mm. And they would almost literally break down every time. Mm. When I asked them, are you okay? Because mm. you're clearly not hating me. Yeah. You're hating this. There's something else. This, this pain that you are going through. Mm. Can, I, can I talk to you? Mm. So I must have at least spoken to 100, 200 founders who were earlier used to be just trolls and... People used to push, put hate when I started asking them on private message that, are you okay? I clearly see there is some pain that you're going through. Can you talk about it? Hmm. And I felt better because suddenly instead of trying to defend, I could see where their feedback was coming from. And suddenly they became your champions. One thing I've learned, uh, it was an insight from this weekend. The path from shame to pride is shorter than path from shame to normalcy. From shame to pride is shorter than pride to normalcy. Than pride to normalcy. Okay. If some if you're ashamed of something, I'm much it's much easier to make you proud of that versus make you think that it's not okay and it's normal. Hmm. Same way, when you take an emotionally sensitive thing and you actually make their thing to give you feedback or like make it their moment to get attention from you or whatever, you, you're converting that shameful moment into a pride or a proud moment and, and you can flip them almost uh, emotionally. People don't understand that it's much easier to convert a religious fanatic to, un, to a different religion versus trying to make them an atheist. Interesting. Right? Because when you're an extreme version, right, uh, you're likely to switch. The, the, the distance between extre extremism is extremely short. Mm -hmm. Right? So what I'm trying to say through that is that a lot of times we don't process feedback in, in cohorts. We, can, we process our customer behavior. We don't behavior segment it. We don't segment it. Mm. We don't segment it. That where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. Is this feedback? Is somebody upset mm -hmm. about your success? Because they are not successful. They are struggling for years, not being able to raise money. Mm. Right? And now I empathize a lot more with that and I talk to them. Right? And I tell them how much it's all about luck too. Right? And, and 
like I constantly I have not gone off on social media I share everything I feel because very few people are sharing because they are constantly trying to be this perfect people right so suddenly one one of my posts will have 10000 likes and one of them will have 100 likes because I am writing to share not to get likes mm. and the moment you get de addicted to chasing likes and all about expressing you will be surprised how much of an authentic following that you will get where people will be actually willing to give feedback i have recently wrote on linkedin hey i want to make cred better can you give me some feedback and 1500 high quality comments like almost two years of road map over there fascinating and that happens when you are truly out there in, instead of showing oh cred just raised this much and 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 one more thing i've learned in media is that when founders raise money they put founders pictures on the news articles i think it's completely wrong because hmm. it creates massive envy hmm. why sh- why is the company logo not there hmm. right it's a very asia problem i i think like we put make these founders heroes and we start believing all of that stuff like uh, the, i would the love the founders start to believe it too yeah i mean it's, 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 <laughs> that's the problem yeah. right because they think that they are gods but they are not and and like like if i raise uh i mean i've actually to specifically request media that don't put my pictures cuz it is not me it is the team that go, got this far and i don't want one person to be celebrated over here and let's not create this aura around this one person i'm i'm happy being uh, a kunal shah on twitter with not even a real picture it's just some version of me over there uh and that has that person never talks about cred it talks about everything other than cred which mm. is useful because people want to see that version uh, and i think uh, a lot of time people don't understand that power of personal media like what you're doing with this podcast right like you you talked about earlier that how even though it may not have that massive audience but how targeted it is because mm-hmm. people want to listen to this stuff right mm-hmm. and and there are very few authentic conversations where people are talking about real stuff versus the propaganda stuff that you need to constantly do in public domain. Yeah. So I think I think it's a fine balance and and one final point on you you mentioned about the public perception thing, right? If you will live for public perception, you'll become the cloud of that versus meaning the APIs yeah, connected the API, to you the, the wrong APIs are, are connected going to, to be also yeah. and and you'll normalize to that and you'll normalize to that. Mm. which cannot result in anything because they are looking for like social media is like twitter particularly is an outrage machine they are looking for the next topic or person to bash mm. so by taking that apis can you build a great product i don't think so because they are not interested in making a better product they are interested in outraging about the next thing mm. it's a very dangerous game to play the PR game. Yep. I think I mean every company has to play it but when the individuals in the company start playing it. This is I think a very risky game. Yeah. Because the end goal is unclear. Yep. And the end goal almost has nothing to do with the well-being of your organization if it depends on those individuals. Yeah. It's also very hard to encourage as many people in the organization to get out there. Yeah. And balance yep. the narrative yep. and to make it seem what the reality is which is the team. Yeah. To be honest, you know, yeah, founders work hard, but way more people within the organization work even harder. Yeah. You know, and people don't call that out. They always say the founder works hard, so like like not in my company. No. I've got crazy people of all levels that are working harder than founders or leaders mm-hmm. in the organization and it's not it's not just that. And this whole thing about work life balance, it's it's a very very interesting thing because at the end of the day there's there's two camps there's the camp that believes that that is complete rubbish mm-hmm. and that it cannot be achieved um and okay so I'll tell you my perspective then I like to hear mm-hmm. yours sure i think that the people whose alignment of their purpose and what their company is doing if that alignment is very high if that overlap is very big then work and life will permeate almost you know seamlessly yeah um they'll be thinking about work everywhere they're going etc so if that is the definition of work life balance which is a compartmentalization mm-hmm. of your life 
that won't work for the most fulfilled, purpose-driven founders. Yep. It's in them. It's it's who they are. It's not work and life. It's this is who I am. This is what I want to achieve, etc. So it's almost like, and and that sucks sometimes for their families and for their friends. Yep. Uh, because even when I'm hanging out with my friends, of which half of them are actually working in Gojek, I still talk about Gojek all the time. Yep. Um, which annoys some of the spouses and some of the other friends who don't really are not in, interested in tech. Having said that, one of the biggest transformations had to happen to me when I had children. Mm -hmm. So two years ago, I had mm -hmm. my first child. Mm -hmm. Now I have two mm -hmm. baby girls. And, and what happened at that moment was then a reorientation, not a reorientation, but a re-expansion of my purpose mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. This is biological. I had no, I had, it just hacked me Interesting. immediately. It just hacked me. And uh, what happened then was I was faced with a choice of a very, very tough choice of leaving early to work, to see my kids to bed every day, which I knew deep down was more important thing to me than the concept. Most experienced founders already figured this out very quickly. The number of hours you put into something does not correlate to the yep. impact that you put in. This yep. is completely yep. wrong. Yep. Working hard does not mean yep. putting in just hours. Yep. It's about impact per hour. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. with engineering, yep. by the way. Yep. Everything in life yep. is like that. But it's not that. I wasn't worried about that, about having less impact. I was worried about the perception of being seen by my team members as checking out, as being checked out, mm -hmm. or being lazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have no idea how much, how deeply insecure it made me to have to leave the office visibly every day at around 5 6 p.m. Interesting. Right? Um, to go home and have that confidence to say, I choose my children mm -hmm. versus all the consequences I knew people would have the perception of me. Mm -hmm. In a role modeling position, mm -hmm. in an organization that I am constantly being looked at. Mm -hmm. by my team, I had to make that call. Yeah. But guess how you how I figured out that was the right call? Mm -hmm. After doing it, after some time, the guilt subsided and the sense of fulfillment increased until now I'm already neutral again. Mm. And that means that I did the right action mm -hmm. that matched my personal purpose. Perfect. And that's how you know. These are the little hints the world is trying to tell you. Whenever you want to make a trade-off, Try it and see if it's making you feel crappier or better. Hmm. That's the easiest way of actually seeing if you are within this alignment. And I don't think a lot of founders focus on that feeling and A-B testing I think, that. I think that's perfect. I think the effectiveness of what you did, right, probably got you more focused, uh, got you more focused about how you spend your time, right? Because unfortunately, you can probably get more capital. You cannot get more time per day. So I quit having lunch, by the way, which turned out great for my health. I did this intermittent fasting thing. Oh, so cool. I, so I had that extra hour as well. And, and it was made me feel healthier, lighter, cognitive load, etc. Perfect. Perfect. So, so I I, think, there I are think, hacks around yeah, it. So the yeah. Effectiveness uh, uh, takes the thing is that, let's say you would drive a very different type of meeting structure saying that, hey, I would love for you to come more prepared for this discussion. Or let's what is actionable from this discussion. Uh, I think the moment you start doing some of these things, the impact per hour can significantly improve when you forcefully reduce the hours uh, that you can put, right? For example, a, a busy founder is a sign of not prioritizing, and, and which is not good for the org because the org is also manifesting that same thing, right? And I think... I believe founders should be not busy. They should be having enough time to think. Now, if they do that with spending time reading books or spending time with kids or going on vacation, like one thing I'd learned in Free Charge was terrible is that I took zero day vacation for five years of running Free Charge. What? Right? And I think it was terrible for my team because I wasn't clear on many things. Mm. Because there was no dime, downtime to really think what I want. Of course. Right? True reflection. Correct. And, and a lot of people forget that the word vacation comes from vacay, which is vacating your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I was just constantly in the game because I felt the same amount of guilt 
saying that how can I leave, expecting all the guys to work over mm -hmm. here. But it was that, a necessity based, right? There was an element of peer pressure yeah. there, and the and, and, and first the time founders, first model. time founders, they they always believe that they have to do the most out of hours because yeah. how will they inspire otherwise? But leadership is not ours. Leadership is about impact. Yes. Right. And I think that thought process came to me in the second time uh, being a founder that like I spend probably two hours per day on average in office now versus spending all the time in office because mm -hmm. automatically it forces people to use that time effectively. And I'm having more time to think, meet people, learn new things. I'm here in Gojek trying to ask questions to you and Nadeem, I mean, Nadeem and Andre and Kevin that how do you do this and how do you do that? Mm -hmm. And imagine if I could do that every day and still run the company, I'll be so much more effective because I'll solve, I, mean, I got three insights today that I made notes of today, which only happened because I had the time to shut down from my day to day and actually think about something which can yep. actually make an implement in my company. But a lot of time we don't get that. We don't read books. We don't get time to read anything. And, and, and our knowledge is not going to compound unless we have external stimuli constantly Dude, driving that. That's exactly how I felt in the first couple of years. I felt like, so where am I actually learning stuff from outside? I learned a lot from my team members and stuff, mm -hmm. but where am I learning from outside when I don't have time to think? In the same way that the revolution of the smartphone elevated the science of UX design due to the lack of space, in the smartphone. Yeah. So too, does that work with your calendar? Yes. Okay. Amazing. So, so one of the things that I always recommend to leaders in, in tech companies is show me your calendar. And they're always skeptical in the beginning. I told them your calendar. And I'm like, you see this? Next week, I'd like you to experiment. Cut 50% of, so make sure you have 50% empty. I don't care how. It's up to you. Just oh, there's make a it, simple hack for that. What do you do? Uh, you put a calendar a time for yourself. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. block it out. Exactly, exactly. That's what I mean. So you block out your own calendar, 50% every week. And and obviously, what did they start doing? They they started cutting the uh, cadences. Suddenly, they had to talk about, do I really need to be in this cadence? Am I contributing anything? Is an email sufficient, et cetera? There's all these implicit assumptions of things you have to be in that are on a regularized basis. Some of you do, of course. But the quality and the impact of why you're doing that or just for the sake of it, because we should have a weekly meeting on this. We should have a bi-weekly meeting on this. There's so many assumptions there that can question. And that just floods up time. And I'm like, so I tell them at this level of leadership, where do you think? Where do you find the ad hoc conversation of bumping into someone and then running something that you wouldn't have otherwise planned? Where does serendipity happen? Yeah. Where do you just sit down and read for a bit? Sometimes I like just sit down in the office and I'll read for half an hour. But I have now the track record and the level of personal security to do stuff like that, right? Sure. That takes like, I'm, but I'm idiosyncratic in that because I get to do that and people won't really criticize me. Sure. So for a huge amount of everybody else, doing those bold moves that actually add to your own development, add to your well-being, and add to your growth as a leader, man, but people I, are so I scared don't of think doing they have that. To, I don't think they have to wait to get to certain achievement. I'll tell you why. Uh, the best way to see the chessboard is to not be on the chessboard. The best way to see the chessboard is to not be on the chessboard. Explain. If you are in the day-to-day -day action, being the knight, being the... The, the king being the, the, the best soldier out there uh, on the chessboard trying to drive things. Where do you get to see the whole chessboard? I get it. It's and like playing Worldcraft 2 from the perspective of your ogre. Doesn't yes, work. Yes. Doesn't work. <laughs> but you may be the best guy out there, uh, but you don't see the whole game. Yeah. And, and unless you every now and then look at the whole chessboard, and see where your positions are and what you need to do and take some calls, right? You will never get better at the game. But a lot of times founders have this need to be this best warrior. Be in the trenches. Yes. The being in the trenches is useful when you're the CEO, not the founder. Here's the key difference. The founder is in an evolving game. And sometimes it means killing the first game that they started and moving to the next game because they need to survive 
and CEOs are designed as missiles who will kind of go and attack something. So there has to be a, if you are founder and CEO, you need to have dual personality. Interesting. The CEO is in the trenches for X amount of hours, doing cadence, doing reviews, looking at OKRs, all of that stuff. A founder is looking at the game, not just their own game, the whole world's game. How is this whole thing evolving? What's going on? What's the real uh, map looking like right now? Hmm. And when do you get that chance? And by the way, you cannot read that from a consultant's report. Mm -hmm. Can you can can you really read a I mean a consultant's report on mobility and know the insights? No. Only when you will travel to India, only when you will talk to the founder in Australia, or you will kind of speak to somebody over some some other place and figure out the nuances on how markets are moving, mm -hmm. you will get how your game is looking like. One of the things I've learned when I was in my break between two startups was something called as contrast traveling. So I'll tell you how it works is that I used to go to a developed nation and underdeveloped nation together in one trip. Mm. Always coupled. Always coupled. So I'll switch from, let's say, a, let's say a, a Morocco to uh, Switzerland, like like in, in 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 almost together, and I actually understood India better by doing that, because the contrast ratio actually made me see my country better, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And only when you do these things, you actually see what's going happening in your own business. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we are so busy and getting little information about what's happening in the world, whereas the world is m moving so fast. The shelf life of a business is less than five years now. You need to be in the next game and next game and next game and next game. And unless you're seeing the game, you are playing that game that's going to end. And a lot of times we become obsolete because mm -hmm. you are the best player of that game that is not relevant anymore. So to keep doing well in the sport, you can't be playing the sport constantly. Because you be you'll become extremely good at that sport and the sport may be off the Olympics. Fantastic. Kunal, thank you so much. We've run out of time, but this has been such an inspiring and insightful session. Thank you so much for being a guest. Please come again for the next one. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you liked it, please hit like, subscribe, and follow us on social media. Thanks so much for tuning in.